Hello, my name is Marie Kreuzer. I'm from Austria and my film Der Boden unter den Füßen, The Ground Beneath My Feet, uh, is shown here on the Berlinale in competition and I'm very happy to be nominated for a Teddy Award. Wiedersehen. Schönen Tag. Gleichfalls. Die haben mich in den Wahnsinn getrieben. Wenn die zu transpirieren anfangen, dann kriege ich immer die Krise, ey. Du hast hier wirklich alles gemacht, Junge. Ich kann hier zwei Drittel der Belegschaft halten, ne? Was you? Du hast hier meinen Job gemacht. Zum Jahreswechsel bist du Associate Principal, dann Sydney. Browning machen wir gemeinsam. Das wird eine Riesensache für uns. Bitte haben Sie noch einen Augenblick Geduld. Sie werden sofort weitergeleitet. Frau Wingstein? Ja, grüß Gott, Herr... Mur, heutige Bezugspflege. Die Verlegung war problemlos, Ihre Schwester ist ansprechbar und wird gerade untersucht. Ich kann Sie durchstellen, aber erwarten Sie noch nicht zu viel. Ja, Sie wissen ja schon, wie das ist. Ja, ja, ich weiß. Die Kollegin mit den Anrufen... Hola, ich bin Bleiben gleich da. Bleiben einfach in der Leitung. Ich, ich hab dich nicht finden können, es ist 16.08 Uhr. Ja. Der, der Conference Call. Bitte, Lola, alle sind in der Leitung. Einen Augenblick Geduld. Sie werden sofort... Hello and welcome to the 33rd Teddy Award. I'm Hannah Congdon and I'm here talking to director Marie Kreutzer to discuss her film The Ground Beneath Her Feet. Hi Marie, thank you so much Hi. for talking to us today. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I wanted to start by asking that because the film is written and directed by you, mm. so where did the idea come from and, and how did it come to you? Um, the film has many origins. I had, a, I had an aunt who, had, who, was, a, who was schizophrenic um, like the sister in the film that inspired me, inspired me. It, I was doing research about schizophrenia all my life, not knowing it. Um, and I think at some point it was clear that I would someday write something about it or, or make something with that, with, with these um, um, special um, experiences that I had with, uh, with a mentally ill person. Um, and the other origin was my stepsister worked as, an, as a business consultant and we were at about the same age but our lives were so very different. I was a film student at that time and she was based in London and traveling a lot and making money and, and just she, she, from, from the outside it all looked so perfect and I wanted to know more about what she's doing and then I made a documentary about her but it was not easy because it's not possible to film anything work-related really, it's all confidential, so I think it was already clear that I would do something fictional someday. So th these two origins at some point that I don't really remember became one, one story or one constellation and um, I think what really interested me was the darkness in, in every one of us and um, how much we are willing to see of it or, or how much we, we are able to admit that there is something inside that we might not be able to control. Um, and then also the, um, our, our constant fear of not being perfect on every level, our constant struggling for perfection and optimizing our lives. Yeah. And has your sister seen it, the film? Um, my stepsister, she's step not my sister, we were not so close. Okay. Uh, but uh, she was here uh, for the pr premiere because she helped me a lot with the screenplay. She's not a consultant anymore. But she knows everything about it, so she really helped me very much. She, she read it several times and gave me a very exact feedback. And she also saw the film uh, in the editing process to tell me if everything was like exact or if we could still change something for, for maybe not for the better, but for the more um, correct. Yeah. And how did she find watching it if it was based on sort of similar experiences to what she'd had? Yeah. First she just taught me two little things that she found not, not exactly correct and then she said but the main thing was that I was so happy to not be doing this anymore. Mm. She, she, she said it, it brought her back instantly. Uh, I was trying to think of other films that look at sort of a businessy world or commercial mm. world uh, and most of the examples I could think of focused on uh, men in that mm. world. Uh, so you know, American Psycho or yeah. Wall Street and those kind of films. Um, and I actually realised that it was quite rare to focus on a woman uh, mm. in that business world. I wondered 
why do you think that is and why did you want to do that? <clears throat> I never <clears throat> I never even really thought about that because Lola was always she was there from the beginning. I, I saw the character very clear from the beginning and it was clear. I, I never even thought about her being a man. Maybe or um, I guess it's because I'm a woman myself and I always feel uh, more capable of, of describing a woman's character maybe, I don't know. And then of course I was also interested in um, in the special difficulties of women in, in, in such a f male dominated field as of course most business fields are but um, and, a, and about the question of her having to be m more manly than a man or I don't know all these issues um, certainly played played a role yeah. and I wondered was was the sort of scenes that were particularly misogynistic mm -hmm. were they based on experiences of of women that you actually spoke to or if, or of your stepsister Cause, no cause, you know, no but when I talked to her about it no I think I came up with the idea because there was first there was only a scene where um where a colleague of her or not from her but a man from from the company she she worked for asked her out for a drink and she said yeah and and and, and it was about how how would she react have reacted in a situation like this and she said it's it's it was absolutely not okay to say no um it it, it should uh, <clears throat> when when a business partner is asking you for for a drink and says let's let's discuss this in a bar or something <clears throat> she would have been um, she she would have had um, to to go with him. Um, that doesn't mean uh, she would have said, would have been forced to say yes to everything. But she couldn't say no. I won't discuss this at this point. Or go there. Or go there. So, um, and I think this this made me think it further or, or take it further to that scene where 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 that, that uh, male client is really um, well. Um, sorry, I'm a little bit tired now of the lunch <laughs> and looking for the words. <laughs> um, well, it, it led to that actual scene at some point. Yeah, because I was actually in the cinema yesterday, there were, there were quite a lot of women in the audience. There were quite a few intakes of breath, mm -hmm. uh, a few scenes in the film, and I just mm -hmm. wondered if they were actually based on, on truths. No, not, not necessarily tr tr uh, re real scenes that she told me about, but of course every woman knows situations like this and has heard of situations like this. So it was clear to me that I would have something like that in the film. But it was even more interesting for me when my stepsister said that um, it was basically not allowed to say no to something like that. Yeah, which is also based on this like, rigidly heteronormative uh, mm. structures. Yeah. Yes. Um, and do you think that there is any, any space for or openness about homosexuality within the no sort of I don't think so world. maybe maybe uh, it's like in politics of course maybe there are a lot of uh, people who are homosexual but they wouldn't they wouldn't be open with it that's mm, that's the thing uh, I think it's not um, in, in what, what happens behind closed doors nobody cares but um, consultants and that was also something on, on another level which uh, was a lot of work in the in the costume design. They always have to be clean, cleaned up, uh, uh, but 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 not not to um, not not take too much attention, not to not not sexy, not beautiful, not looking rich. It, it, they always have to look very clean and very conservative. And that um, that importance of 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 something very um, yeah conservative is is of course in, in conflict with everything outside of the classical um, um, heterosexual man-dominated world. Yeah. And throughout the film Lola almost seems to be performing this persona that is what society expects of her. Mm -hmm. So she kind of performs being straight uh, mm -hmm. because that's what people expect of yes. her. She hides all of these cracks underneath the surface so she hides the fact that she has uh, this sister mm -hmm. with a serious mental yes. illness. Um, I wondered if part of the fact that she starts to unravel is slightly because she loses the sense of what is her own reality and what's the reality she's built for 
society mm. to expect. Is, mm -hmm. is that how you saw it as well? Yes. Um, and I think that um, because of course now I'm often asked, is she hallucinating? Is she not? How did you mean it? Uh, is it? Uh, I was already ask. There are people who think it, I made a mistake in writing the script because I didn't make it clear in the end. So <laughs> um, um, I think that um, what we see and hear is not the truth. It's just our own. Um, it's our own view on the world. It's our. It's what we feel it to be and. Um, everything we see and, and everything you experience is judged inside us within the second and then we decide what is important, what is not important. So I think if you're, um, now I don't find the word for Wahrnehmung, uh, if, if, if you change, if your interpretation of what, what, you're, what you're experiencing changes, I don't know, or shifts, I don't know if you instantly know that something is wrong. And that, that was interesting for me. And I know that, for example, my aunt, who, who was schizophrenic, didn't know most when she was hallucinating. She thought it was the truth. And that's what's so, what's so scaring about it, I think. Um, I don't know if I answered your question. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's the, it's the, the afternoon. Uh, <laughs> well, we've already done, <laughs> done multiple no. interviews. Then. <laughs> Quite hard work. Um, and yeah, do you think that there's a disproportionate pressure on women to hide these cracks beneath the surface? Yes, of uh, course. Because Elise is doing it as well. Yes. She's got these pills for, mm. I think, antidepressants. Mm. But that's, she doesn't talk about that at all. No. It's mm. very much hidden beneath the surface. Does, mm -hmm. is, does that pressure fall more on women? Yes, I think so. I think that men have a lot of pressure to to um, to be strong and and perform in many ways. But I think it doesn't have changed so much for men, and it, it's always the same that we want men to be like. But what society and what also women themselves expect women to be now um, is so demanding that n none of us can be able to fulfill all of that. Um, there are so many levels and so many roles that we should be uh, able to um, fill out throughout the day and throughout our lives. Um, and, and, and that has changed so much and, and it's too demanding, I think, for, for all of us. And maybe especially in this management consultancy world of as course. well, because to weakness show that is weakness is not allowed. Yeah. yeah. Anne almost falls into uh, like a stereotype of mm -hmm. volatile women or mm -hmm. weak women. Um, so Lola's relationship with her boss or lover uh, mm -hmm. is, is quite interesting. At, at times it genuinely seems quite tender and quite a beautiful relationship mm -hmm. and at other times her boss seems to be particularly manipulative. Mm -hmm. I wondered how you saw that relationship. Um, I don't think there is love. I, I think they need someone. And when you lead a life like they do, um, you cannot really have a relationship um, outside of this world because they're working all the time. And I, I think that they, they seem to be working together a lot in different teams, but they seem to be working together most of the time. So it's just obvious that you would look for someone around you to be with because that's your only possibility and I think it's 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 um, what what they share are certain moments of being free from from the outer um, uniform um, and just be yeah, I, I just wanted to say just be themselves, but they're not really themselves. So it, there's no real, I think they're not, they, they don't really experience love or, or real closeness um, with each other, but, but still they, they, they are able to give something um, and to share something and just to have these moments of relaxation, even if it's main, mainly sexual, but it's just uh, it's just the moments that they need to to release something. I think that's that's the way I see that relationship, and I don't think that Elise is really manipulating Lola, but for both of them, it's absolutely clear that their work is the most important thing. And she's even tougher in that because she's the boss. And she had, had, I'm sure she had a longer way than Lola. She, 
until she really was there where she is now. So she, she would just um, uh, always say that the, the client, that the project comes first and then comes everything else. I also found it interesting that maybe uh, in some films when you have a homosexual relationship a lot of attention is drawn to that and yes. that becomes the theme mm -hmm. and that's very much not the case mm -hmm. in this film. Why did you choose to sort of almost let it just be something in the backdrop rather than maybe explicitly addressing it? Um, I will be honest, it, it was written as a heterosexual relationship first. At least was a man. Okay, quite interesting. And then I couldn't find the right actor for that role. And I was frustrated and th thought I did something wrong and the role is not good or I don't know. And then so some, it was a Friday night and suddenly I thought, I'm going to make it a woman. And then over the weekend I just I, I took the script and just changed the name first and read the script again just with a, with a female name. And I loved it. I loved it so much and then I sent it to the producer and he was a little shocked because it, he, he said it's, it's, it changes everything. We have, don't, do we have to tell the fundings? And I said, no, I don't think we have to tell every, anyone. It's the same story. It's just a woman. And then that was exactly what I loved about it, that um, changing only the, the name and, and, and making it an, an actress instead of an actor but not changing anything else made Elise such a special character because she was written like a, as a man yeah. and um, uh, autom automatically uh, didn't, didn't, um, didn't give the relationship such a central role as, as you just mentioned from, yeah. from other films about homosexual relationships. And I love that because I think that's exactly what we should try to achieve or what will will mean equality at some point, that we do not have to tell stories, there is a homosexual relationship and that's really a problem and how do people deal with it and these films all have their, you know, I love many of them and they also have, uh, have changed something, but I think in the end, shouldn't it be our, everybody's goal for, it, for all of us to be equal and not having, you know, uh, questions like this being the center of a film. Um, but the interesting thing wa was, of course, that some people said, shouldn't they talk about it at some point or shouldn't it be important in the film that they maybe hide their relationship because they are lesbians? And that's not why they hide it. They hide it because it's just not, uh, it's just not allowed. They should, they should, they are there for work. It's just not appropriate. So th they, they are not even hiding it for that reason. And um, maybe I, I wouldn't have been able maybe to write it like this if I... If, if it would, would have been two women from the beginning. Yeah, if you'd had that in your mind from yes. the start. Had you ever done that before with a, a film character? Had you ever just flipped the gender after having written it? Yes, it was only... <laughs> I, had a, I, had a, I made a film before about three couples who have chil children for the first time and one of the children was a boy and he was called Elvis, like Elvis Presley, because his mother was such a big fan of Elvis Presley. And then when we did the casting there were so many cool girls and I didn't find a boy. And there was a girl that I liked so much and I had, she didn't fit into the other parts and then I said, let's make Elvis a girl, but let's, re let's, let's keep the name. And people, again and again people come to me and say, ah, because in, in, in German we say, in Austria we say, um, we, don't even, we don't just say Elvis, we, chase, we say the Elvis always say the article yeah. and and people always come to me and say ah the Elvis it was great <laughs> <laughs> um, that's yeah that's maybe <laughs> and in the future would you ever write a script uh, and sort of just do it purely gender blind so just not have any genders on the characters and then see what happens in casting that's a good idea I haven't thought about it yet but I could I could <laughs> imagine doing that it sounds sounds good <laughs> And I just finally wanted to ask, uh, there is a point in the film where it seems like it, it could tip almost into being a thriller. Mm. Um, and actually it restrains itself. It, mm. it ends up being much more measured and uh, this sort of, uh, yeah, much calmer analysis mm. of female psychology. Mm -hmm. Why did you want to sort of rein it in almost in that way rather than let it go full-blown sort of psychological thriller? 
uh, we were all tempted again and again in all of the departments to make into the genre, like um, making things a bit more dramatic, um, the light, the costumes, even then afterwards in, in, the, in, in the sound mixing. But I didn't want it, I wanted it to be a drama and only with some elements of the thriller just to like um, make you feel that something might not be might not be like it should be or you know it, it, it's just like like little like little hints for me into some on a, to bring you on another level or to make you um be doubt doubtful about what you see maybe that's that's what i wanted maybe that's that's the right um way to answer it Thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank uh, you. And I hope you can make it to the Teddy Award party. I hope so too. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>